procedure for the designing of lag compensator using root lockers okay already we discussed about the designing of lag compensator using pod lock next section using root locks the first step is to design the root lockers of the uncompensated system okay if we have an open loop system first are the root lockers of the uncompensated system next step determine the dominant pole sb okay the dominant pole sb the dominant pole sb is find out by using the equation sb is equal to minus theta omega n plus or minus j omega n into root 1 minus theta square okay if we know the values of theta and omega n we can find dominant pole sb by using the equation sb is equal to minus theta omega n plus or minus j omega n into root 1 minus theta square where theta is the damping ratio and omega n is the natural frequency okay if we don't know both the values of theta and omega n we can't find sb by using this equation okay depends upon the question in some questions only damping ratio theta is given and some questions in both damping ratio and natural frequencies are given so if both are given we can find sb by using this equation if the damping ratio theta is given we know the equation cos theta equal to theta so theta equal to cos inverse theta okay cos theta is equal to theta then theta can be find out by using the equation theta is equal to cos inverse theta okay theta is equal to cos inverse theta on the first step we draw the root lockers of the uncompensated system that is the root lockers of the uncompensated system by using this equation we got theta equal to cos inverse theta okay then draw a line which makes an angle theta with the negative real axis okay for example if theta is equal to 60 degree then mark angle 60 degree which makes with negative real axis and draw the angle okay this 60 degree draw this line which makes an angle 60 degree with the negative real axis this line cut the root lockers okay this line the angle line crosses the root lockers and this value is the dominant pole sb okay this value is dominant pole it is b it has real and imaginary value okay here the real value is 0.5 and imaginary value is minus j 1.35 so the answer is 0.5 minus 0.5 plus or minus j 1.35 okay this is the procedure for finding the dominant pole sb okay if only we know the damping ratio the theta then theta is equal to cos inverse theta draw the line which makes an angle with the negative real axis that angle line cut the root lockers and that point is the dominant pole sp okay that is the second step first step we draw the root lockers of the uncompensated system second step we find the dominant pole sp next step is determine the open loop gain of the uncompensated system at s is equal to sb okay in this uncompensated system we don't know the value of the open loop gain k okay for finding the open loop gain k k is equal to product of vector length from sb to the open loop poles divided by product of vector length from sb to the open loop zeros okay we can see how to find the open loop gain k in this graph it is clear that the poles are 0 minus 2 and minus 8 are the poles and there is no zeros so k equal to k is the product of length of vectors from all poles to sd divided by product of length of vectors from all zeros to sd okay so with from this zero to sd then another pole from minus 2 to sd then from minus 8 to sd that is this length be l1 this length be l2 and this length be l3 so k is equal to l1 into l2 into l3 divided by product of length of vector from all zeros to sd here there is no zero therefore take the value as 1 in the denominator okay 
K is the product of length of vectors from all poles to ST divided by product of length of vectors from all zeros to ST. So we need to find the vector length. Okay, here 10 divisions is equal to 0.5. So multiply each length with 0.5. Okay, we can measure this L1, L2, L3 in by using scale. So we need to we need the vector length. So here 10 division is equal to 0.5. So multiply each length with 0.5. That is L1 into 0.5, L2 into 0.5, and L3 into 0.5. If 10 division is equal to one unit, then there is no need that multiplication with this value. Okay. So k is equal to product of length of vectors from all poles to SD divided by product of length of vectors from all zeros to SD. If there is no zero, take the value as 1. Our aim is to design the lag compensator. So in the lag compensator, the parameters are beta and t. Okay, here we are going to find the parameter beta of the compensator. Let k be u. k be u means velocity error constant of the uncompensated system. k be d. That is a desired velocity error constant. Okay. The desired velocity error constant be given in the question. Velocity find out the question and the turn down. Let us say that kvd that is desired velocity error constant. Next one is kvu velocity error constant of the uncompensated system. We know the uncompensated system g of s then we can find the kvu velocity error constant of the uncompensated system. Then find a. That is, this a is a factor that a is equal to kvd by kvu. Velocity, this is velocity error constant divided by velocity error constant of the uncompensated system. Then beta can be find out by using the equation 1.1 1.2 into a. That is beta such that it is 10 to 20 percentage greater than a. So it's 1.1 to 1.2 into a. Normally we are taking 1.2 into a. A. Find the factor A, then multiply 1.2 into that value. We got beta. Okay. Next step determination of transfer function of lag compensator. So, for finding the transfer function of lag compensator, we need the value of this time constant t. Okay. The zero of the compensator, Zc, is equal to minus 1 by t. Okay. Zc is equal to minus 1 by t equal to. 0.1 into second pole of g of s. The condition is Zc is equal to minus 1 by t into minus 1 by t that is equal to 0.1 into second pole of g of s. That means consider this system. From this graph it is clear that the poles are 0, minus 2 and minus 8. Okay, the poles are 0, minus 2 and minus 8. Here the first pole is 0. The second pole is minus 2. Okay. The second pole is minus 2. Okay. This is the, by this way we can find the second pole. The second one. Second pole means second on the graph. The second pole is minus 2. Okay. So Zc is equal to minus 1 by t. That is equal to 0.1 into second pole of g of s. By comparing these values we get the value of T. So, T is equal to 1 by minus 0.1 into second pole of G of S. So, the pole of the lag compensator PC is equal to 1 by beta T. From the step 4, we got beta and the step 5, we got the value of T. Therefore, pole of the lag compensator PC is equal to minus 1 by beta T. Therefore, the transfer function of the lag compensator is equal to S plus 1 by T divided by S plus 1 by beta t okay transfer function of lag compensator is s plus 1 by t divided by s plus 1 by beta t okay next we need to find the open loop transfer function of the compensated system okay so we have we have the values of compensator and the uncompensated system the compensator transfer function gc of s is here and we know the value of g of s this is a block diagram closed loop system we need to find the open loop transfer function of the compensated system. So the open loop transfer function of the compensated system G naught of s equal GC of s into G of s. GC of s is 
s plus 1 by t divided by s plus 1 by beta t and g of s in the f is the uncompensated system so g naught of s equals g c of s into g of s okay g naught of s equals g c of s into g of s next the last step we need to check whether the system satisfy the steady state error requirement okay in the question we have a desired velocity error constant or steady state error requirement something like this so we have kvu we have velocity error constant or steady state error something like that we need to check whether it satisfies the requirement check whether the compensated system satisfy the steady state error requirement if, if it is satisfied then the design is accepted otherwise repeat the design by modifying the location of poles and zeros of the compensator okay we know that the beta varies from 1.1 to 1.2 we take 1.2 into beta otherwise change the values of poles and zero by alternating the value and redesign the compensator okay the final step is to check whether the compensator satisfies the steady state error requirement the, we have the condition a is equal to kvd by kvu so kvu is the velocity error constant uncompensated system and kvd is the velocity error con desired velocity error constant we need to check whether this compensated system satisfy the desired value or greater than that value okay if it the value is acceptable the lack compensated design is completed otherwise we need to repeat the design by modifying the location of poles and zeros of the compensator that's all about the designing of lack compensator using root lockers thank you